nor yet staves. Giving all praise to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rakakodash. And this is from Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 10. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start at. I'll start at 5. It says, These twelve the Lord Jehoshai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Right, command, command gave them a, a order, commission. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. In other words, don't teach the Gentiles. This is not for the Gentiles. Now you might say, well, what about Cornelius? What about Acts 10? What about all the other scriptures where it speaks about the Gentiles being blessed? Well, those Gentiles are Israelites. Uh, we use the term in a Gentile state of mind. All of us at one time were cons was considered Gentiles before we came into this truth we used to shave our beard you had uh, the high and tights or braids or whatever you had you know part of your hair would be shaved off bald you would have tattoos on you you would eat pork shrimp we all did this and when we came in when we when our eyes were opened up to the truth and we we were taught that we were taught that uh we're not to eat shrimp, we're not to eat pork. We're to grow, if we're men, we're, we're to grow our beards. So there was like a change, you know, transformation. You know, being an Israelite is not just saying I'm an Israelite. It's, uh, the scriptures speak about in James be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving oneself so you got guys that know that they're Israelites you got individuals that know that they're Israelites that are cool with men that are out there on the highways and the byways and they figure well I'm cool with them I know them I'm going to be delivered no you're not going to be delivered you're not, necess you're not necessarily going to be delivered because you're not doing the work So when 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 um the Lord said this to the twelve, he gave him a job. He said, This is your job. Oh, even Peter, he questioned um what is he gonna get? Matter of fact, let me go to that. Let me open up another tab. Bear me for a minute. Bear me for a minute. Okay. Okay, this is uh, Matthew 19, verse 27. The, the headline is, The Disciples' Reward. So I'm going to read from the 27th verse to the 30th verse, which is the last verse. It said, uh, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. Meaning, we did did the work you commanded us to do the work and we did we've been doing the work so what are we going to get out of it 
Because there's a reward. Ultimately, all Israel will be rewarded with the kingdom of heaven. But the ones that uh, do this work to the end, he that endureth to the end, they're going to receive a greater gift. It says, and, and then answered Peter and, and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and, and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And the Lord said unto them, Verily I say unto you, truly I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when you are resurrected, when the Son of Man shall sit in the in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones. So that's a high position in the kingdom of heaven. It's, it's first going to start with uh, twelve thrones. And those twelve thrones are for the apostles. So there's going to be order in the kingdom. The number one king on the earth will be Peter, which is David. Because David is going to be put, he's going to sit back on his throne. This is why we teach and believe that uh, Peter is King David coming back. Peter was also Moses. It said in uh, De Deuteronomy, uh, the 33rd chapter, and I believe it's the 5th verse, you can read it if you want, it says that Moses was a king in Jeshurun. In um, De Deuteronomy uh, uh, 28 verse 36, it says, Ye and your king shall go into captivity. Well, that king is talking about King David. It's not talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. It's talking about King David, which was Moses, which was Peter, which was uh, Zerubbabel. He always came back in his lot. Whatever lot that you were in in the past, if you were a prophet in the past, you're going to come back as a prophet. You're not going to come back as a, as a, a rap star, a hip-hop a R and B singer. You're gonna come back in your lot. If you were a prophet in the past, you're gonna come back. Hey, our, our, our ISUPK teaches that John, John uh, the Baptist, fell out the truth. He didn't fall out the truth. If you understand the scriptures, when you go to Saint John, the first chapter, it speaks about there was a man sent by the Most High, whose name was John. And he made the statement that he was he was one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way, and that's a fulfillment of um, what the prophet Isaiah said. So when he said that, he should have known that he was he was uh, Elijah coming back. They did ask him whether he was, are you Elijah? And he said no. Why didn't he know? Because he didn't know. Because the Most High didn't open up his. Uh, his mind to see it but the Lord knew and praised him anyway let me go back to this I'm going a little bit off but anyway that he he came back as Abba Bivens that's that's Elijah which came back as John John never went off John fulfilled his lot when he was John and when he came back the last time he came back as Abba Bivens who taught the men, the three principal men, was um, Masha, Ariah, and Yaikwab. And they had taught men, men came up under them. Some of the men was Lahab, Yesha, uh, Yeshaya, Gazak, and some others. And I, and, that, and I came from that. Well, I was taught directly by the top three as well. And this is why there's so many people making a big deal over the whole Israelite thing because we are those guys that have the truth 
and, and they're not going to other Israelite groups. They're focusing like vocab always says. I'm dealing with the one Westers. Why? Because the one Westers have the truth. And the, and the top group of the one Westers, the former one Westers, is GMS. Even vocab knows that. That's why our name keeps being keeps being brought up. Even Sarnetti, he's always bringing up GMS. Basically, he he kind of kicking you to the curb, Captain Tazariac. That's what you that's what you get for, you know, being cool with him. He's kind of kicking you to the curb. All that time that you put in going to the studio, talking to him on the phone, you giving him his num the, your number and all that. He's kind of kicking you to the curb. Anyway, it says here, let me get back into this. It says, uh, uh, Matthew 19, verse 28, And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the, and, and see, when, when, when Moses was on the scene, Moses came back as King David. He came back as Zerubbabel. He came back as uh, Peter. He came back as uh, Mo, Ma Masha, King Masha. Which I don't even think that these other Israelite groups acknowledge Masha as, as King David. They used to. They said in the regeneration, and regeneration means reincarnation, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. It's going to, the kingdom is going to be on earth. And everyone that hath forsaken house, houses, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundred, a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So let me come back to Matthew 10. Matthew 10 and 5. It says, uh, these 12, the Lord sent forth and commanded, gave them a commission, an order, them saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles. Don't teach the Gentiles, the natural Gentiles, the Moabites, the Edomites. Um, and into any city of the Samaritans and to unite. Now you had Israelites living in Samaria, but you had people that were living in Samaria that were not Israelites that believed that they were Israelites. The, if you go to the account of uh, the woman at the well, she was a heathen. She was of another nation, and she was part of that group that um, King Shalmaneser the fifth. Uh, replaced they because they took took uh, Ephraim and enslaved them along with the northern kingdom and they replaced them with those heathen around about that's in uh, second Kings uh, 17 chapter it says go but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel so our job is to teach the Israelites And um, there's no such thing biblically as uh, what, what is the term that vocab uses? Uh, replacement theology. That means that anytime you come across the word Israel being blessed, it's really talking about the other nations and some of Israel, the body of believers. No, the body of believers are the Israelites that believe. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it's truly at hand at this particular point. The UFO sightings. That's a, that's a major sign that the Mosai is sending to us. That he's coming back. And don't be surprised. If, if it's apparent where you might have 10,000 UFOs. So called UFOs. UAPs. Up in the sky. And just out there in broad daylight. For all to see. Pursuant to uh, uh, the, Ma the, Ma the book of Maccabees, was that 2nd Maccabees 5, if I'm not mistaken, 
I went through it the other day. I see that. Now let's see what's going to happen. Because now the Most High is making himself known. Now he's visiting the earth. And he's getting ready to pounce. He's getting ready to have his son pounce on you. Your society is done. Your society is done. It says in and as seven verse, and as you go preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, that's what we're saying. And then we we tell you what what's a part of the kingdom. Part of the kingdom is we're gonna have slaves. We're gonna have Edomites and the other nations as slaves. It says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and they actually did that because they had spiritual power. Um the uh apostles. Raise the dead. Now Peter had raised a woman named Dar uh, Darkus. She was a saint. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass. Now this right here, the ninth verse tells you what real money is. The Lord said provide neither gold nor silver. He didn't say paper notes. He didn't say FRNs. Real money all paper money, all fiat currency, that's the, that's the old saying. All fiat currency goes to zero, meaning eventually it, it's, wor it's worthless. That was proven during the Weimar Republic. That was proven during the, uh, uh, the Argent, Argent, uh, what's that, Argentinia, whatever that place is called. Argentine, whatever the place is called down in South America. Venezuela, they've been suffering that for the last, I don't know, five, six years. Zimbabwe. And now, America's going to suffer that. You notice prices are going up all over the place. That's inflation. And when it's not checked, it, it, it's, it goes into what's called hyperinflation. Yeah, I was going to get something uh, the other day that was like 250 about six months ago, then it went up to three dollars. Now it's 325. It says, "Provide neither gold nor silver, nor brass in your purses." In other words, travel money, because as you go to these places, people that follow you will will take care of you. Nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes nor yet staffs for the workman is worthy of his meat so now let me go let me look up the word staffs a modern day staff would be a gun let me find it here Strong's G, 4464, Hrabdas. 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 Which means a staff, a walking stick, a twig, rod, branch, a rod with which one is beaten. Uh, you heard that? A rod with which one is beaten. So you're not going to beat nobody with a walking stick. You're not going to beat anybody with a, a twig. A staff as used on a journey or to lean upon or by shepherds when applied to kings and we will be kings with a rod of iron indicates the severest most uh, rigorous rule a royal scepter So ultimately, it's a it's a weapon. So now, when you go to the precepts for G forty four sixty four, it leads you right to uh, it re it leads you right to Revelation uh, twenty uh, Revelation two verse twenty seven, and ye shall rule them with a rod of iron. 
as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father so that's that's um, in the future kingdom let me go to the 26th verse Yeah, I'll start at the 25th verse. Revelation 2 verse 25. So there will be beatings in the kingdom. But that which ye have hold already, hold fast till I come. What do you have? You have the truth. So if you let it go, you're going to lose the kingdom. You're going to have to come back in another life. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works, works, Oh, let me look up the word works. These are works that we're doing. Okay, works. G2041. Strong's G2041. Air gun. Ergon, business employment, that which anyone is occupied, that which one undertakes to do, enterprise undertaken. So what we do, our enterprise, our occupation is what? To do this work, like I'm doing right now, I'm doing the work right now. Any product or whatever, anything accomplished by hand, art, industry, or mind, an act the thing done the idea of working is emphasized um, in uh, op, whatever that means to an opposition I guess to that which is less than work so when you don't do the work when you're not constantly doing this work and when you're taking breaks you're not really doing the work because you were commanded to do this work the Apostle Paul referred to himself as a as a fool for Yahweh Shai's sake and as a prisoner and he referred to his fellow um, people that uh, fellow believers that work with him he, he referred to them as yoke fellows so so the Apostle Paul looked at himself as a slave for the Lord So we're back at Revelation 2 verse 25. But that which ye ha that which ye have hold already hold fast till I come. 26 verse. And he that overcometh and keep my works unto the end, unto the end, he that endureth to the end, to him. So you guys that fought that fell off, you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. You are not going to make it. I don't give a damn how many. Well, I put in 20 years. I put in 15 years. Well, did you endure until the end? Isaiah, the 30th chapter, the 20th verse says, You shall see your teachers. To him will I, back at 20, 26 verse, To him will I give power over the nations. We're going to be over the nations. 27 verse, And he shall rule them, with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers meaning they're going to get batted up even as I received my father so now let's come back to where we at let me read this here Re Revelation 12 verse 5 and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron so the Lord is going to be bashing people over the head and her child was caught up unto the most high and to his throne because he, com he completed his work he did with the, the, the will of the father 
So the Lord never can. The Lord, our Lord. If anybody teach you that the Lord went into slavery, the Lord never went into slavery. The last time the Lord was here in the physical uh, world, we are spirits in the physical world. The police, great song. Um, when he when he was uh, crucified, when he rose. He stayed with the, um, he dwelt with the uh, apostles for 40 days. And he was taken up. And he never came back. He, the, the two men in white, which were angels, said, Why stand ye afar off looking up in the heavens? He that you seen going up in that cloud, the same way he's coming back. He's coming back in ships. And behind him will be um, millions of angels. That's going to destroy this place. So he's coming back for vengeance. He's coming back to do two things. To deliver the elect of Israel. And to destroy the wicked. And destroy Babylon the great which is America. Revelation 19 verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. What do you do with a rod of iron? You, you beat him down. And he treadeth the winepress. The winepress represent Esau. Uh, Isaiah 63. 63rd chapter. Of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power. Because he's doing the will of his father. So what did. What. What does. Uh. I'm back here in Matthew the 10th chapter and the 10th verse 9th verse provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses nor script for your journey now let me look up the word script Gotta look up these words. Strong's G four thousand eighty two. Pera. Pera. Pe Pera. Which means the first word meaning is a wallet. A leather what do you keep in in your wallet? You keep your driver's license, your credit cards, what you make transactions with, you buy things with, and money. A leathern sack in which travelers and shepherds carried their prov provisions. Part of their provisions was what? Um, bringing it up to date is talking about uh, your, uh, your money. And it's also talking about food. Loosely translated is talking about food. Because the people that you encounter and teach, they're supposed to cook for you. They're supposed to give you money. That's why I said provide, carry neither gold nor silver. They're supposed to give you clothes. They're supposed to give you shoes. They're supposed to lodge you. Let you in. In the ancient world, if you had a house, you always had a, a, a another house beside the house, which is a guest house. Which when you was in a guest house, you couldn't come into the main house unless you left the guest house to walk to the main house and knock on the door. So when the Lord said in the 10th verse, nor script, nor for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes nor yet staves now we had this past winter there's people sending us uh, wool socks and uh, thermal gloves it was just people just sending us stuff man and we use the, we, we use the socks the, gl the gloves 
Yeah, but them thermal gloves, my hands are still cold. That's how cold it got in this year, this past winter. It says, uh, 10 verse again, I'm going to close. It says, nor, nor script for your journey. Script meaning wallet. Neither two coats. Neither shoes. Nor yet staves. Now staves actually mean when the Lord said staves, he was talking about rides that you beat people down with. So the, a modern day rod, uh, rod would be the gun. So you got to be careful being out there, man. For the workman is worthy of his meat. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say um, Shalom.